Hi, this is Chris over at Android Police, and I'm here with a video review of the Nexus One car dock. Apologize in advance that my camera doesn't have autofocus, so some of these shots may be kind of blurry. The review is going to be divided up into two sections. The first one's going to be a quicker review of the device setup in my car, and the second section will be a little bit more thorough walkthrough of the quality of the of the dock itself. So let's go ahead and get started. When you put the phone in the dock, it's automatically going to launch Car Home. Apologize for the glare there. It's pretty much the same Car Home that you're accustomed to, uh, with the exception that if you hit the menu button, you have a dock settings option now that allows you to alter the routing of your audio. You can either have the speakerphone and your music going through the speaker that's built into the dock itself or you can have it routed through an external Bluetooth adapter for example that's plugged into your stereo unit or even plug the 3.5 millimeter cable into the jack there and plug that into your auxiliary port in your stereo. So there were a few complaints on the forums that I was reading about people being unhappy about the device not having about the dock itself not having a 3.5 millimeter jack built in. Personally, I dropped about 30 bucks and got something called the Kensington Liquid Audio or Liquid Auxiliary Bluetooth Adapter. It's it's working out pretty well for me. So, if possible, I'd recommend going that route. That way, you can just drop the phone in the dock and you're good to go. So again, car home standard thing that you've already got in your phone. More than likely. We can go ahead and demonstrate voice search here. Find Starbucks. So I've got both the phone audio and the media audio going over my stereo speakers, so that's why you're hearing it through there. The other thing I'd like to demonstrate real quick for you is media playback over Bluetooth. It's pretty crisp. So let's go ahead and take a listen here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So no real problems with that. I listen to a lot of podcasts, a lot of, um, you know, music, stuff like that. Standard things, obviously, over the stereo and haven't had any problems. I'll go ahead and demonstrate the speakerphone real quick because my battery is dying on the camera. See if I can do that before it dies here. My Bluetooth adapter went ahead and automatically paired the phone audio, which I would have rather it not done for the demonstration purposes, but Sorry in advance, this was set up, and then like I said, my Bluetooth adapter went ahead and took over that. So I'll make a quick call to my voicemail here so we can hear the speakerphone on the device itself. You have no messages in your voicemail box. Main menu. To send a message, press 2 to create a... So it's pretty crisp, pretty clear. I haven't had any problems with people on the other end hearing me, and I haven't had any problems hearing them. It's not something you're going to want to use with the windows down. It's not something you're probably going to want to listen to music on. As a speakerphone, it works well, and it's a, it's a good alternative if you don't want people yelling at you over your car stereo. So that's the quick review of the Nexus One car dock setup in my car. I'm going to edit in the second portion of the Nexus One car dock, kind of a, a more thorough overview of the build quality of the dock itself, if you're interested, and uh, so stay tuned for that. Alright, so continuing on with the review, and we're going to do the quick construction overview of the dock so you have an idea of how solid it really is. So you'll see that the rotating mechanism is powered by this uh, kind of ball joint type mechanism 
Obviously, that's not the technical name for this. So if you know exactly what this is, go ahead and leave that in the comments. Behind the dock here, you can see the speaker grates. Probably, like I said, the focus on my camera is not too great, so you may have some trouble seeing that. But you've got the speaker back here, the locking mechanism that will actually you twist to lock to a surface and it's extremely solid um, I'm probably gonna break something trying to trying to lock it onto my coffee table here so we're not gonna mess with that too much I'll go ahead and demonstrate the exciting process of docking your phone basically just slide it in bottom first and then a little clip there slides over obviously car home's not going to launch right now because I don't have it plugged into anything so by the way if you're interested there's the micro USB port the locking mechanism allows you to rotate it pretty much in any direction you'd like so you can see we've got 360 degrees there for your landscape view I personally like to keep it in portrait most of the time you can actually lean the phone forward and backwards pretty extensively so if you need to adjust it for glare issues while you're driving it's pretty easy to do so and then say hello to my cat there you can go ahead and twist twist it on the base there to get a pretty wide range of motion as well so you'd have to be pretty picky not to find a position that works for you at least I haven't had any issues now the only thing that you'll want to watch out for is that when twisting this you may put yourself in a position that the micro USB port may be obscured by the trim of your car or you might lock it and the full range of the phone rotation may be blocked by the trim of your car so I've ran into that a few times for most people who put it on their dashboard or on their windshield, it's not going to be a problem. I've got it on kind of a lower ledge by my clock, so I've run into that issue a few times. Other than that, you know, very solidly constructed, probably not going anywhere very easily. I can't, well, that was perfect timing. I can't really imagine it being a problem with, some, with for anyone if you have it on all right, so that was pretty awesome timing for the batteries to die. Uh, basically, my general opinion is that it, it's definitely something that if you can drop the 55 bucks to pick it up, do it. It's something that I use every day. It's added tremendous value to the phone. And overall, I'm very pleased with it. Like I said, the speaker is not something that I would want to use for music. It works great for a speakerphone. I've never been a fan of Bluetooth earpieces, so this is a great alternative. And, you know, really, the price seems kind of steep, but for the amount of value it does add to the phone and it, the ease of use it does add to some of the day-to-day -day stuff that you would do while driving, like voice search, navigation, things like that, it, it's definitely worth the, uh, worth, worth the money if you can drop it. So... Leave any comments you have on the video on androidpolice.com or on the YouTube page. This is my first video review, so any feedback's appreciated, and you know we'll try and improve on that as we grow. And be sure to follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash androidpolice. And if you have any questions that I didn't cover in the video review, feel free to leave a comment on either the YouTube page or the review on Android Police. And... You know, if you want, I'll even make a specific video for you covering the feature that that you would like me to uh, detail more. So go ahead and do that, and we'll see you around.